welcome to today's episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. Today we have special guest Johnny Catalano um, from uh, Dayton. Yep, that's Dayton. correct. Uh, you are a, uh, um, tell us about yourself, sir. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I am an independent filmmaker uh, living in the, uh, as Paul said, the Dayton area. Uh, and I'm essentially just in the midst of, uh, financing a new feature film. So I've, I've made a, several short films, uh, and well, I'd say I made one proper short film and it was about 41. Uh, so the director's cuts 49 minutes and the festival cuts 41 minutes. And that was really, I think a proper film. Uh, the other films I would consider to be students, uh, made in college or uh were a little uh <laughs> to say the least amateurish um but i think uh my latest film uh funeral for fermansky was i think a proper film and since then i've been financing uh and in pre-production for uh a feature film called sunday dinner um which uh i have an event coming up uh which is a special screening of uh, George A. Romero's uh, Night of the Living Dead, actually, tomorrow night. Uh, and we could talk a little about that, about that um, here soon, I'm sure. Uh, and that's just kind of the, a Kickstarter to a long campaign to uh, finance this kind of local uh, buyer bootstraps type of uh, film and filmmaking. So, yep, about me. Yeah. I, I know several independent filmmakers and it's always trying to get that money tied down to put, put towards your next movie or, uh, you know, getting the right cast together. There's always something. Oh so. yeah. <clears throat> it, it's, it's a totally different ball game, I think. So, I mean, I think a lot of people's conception and when I say a lot of people, I mean, I guess just general public mm -hmm. who, who have nothing to do with, with filmmaking don't really want anything to do with filmmaking. They just kind of view films as a consumer, which is majority of people. Yeah. Uh, most people are just going to see the next Top Gun movie. You know what I mean? Like they're not, they're not, they don't really watch films and, and really be, you know, really think about them or how they're made or, or whatever that is. Um, and yeah. So as an independent, it's a completely different ballgame from a big studio film. Like, Top Gun, which is coming out, I guess, this weekend. Yeah. Um, and, you know, major studio backing, a lot more money, uh, a lot more time, a lot more resources. But uh, a lot of us independents, we really see the film from conception all the way to distribution. Whereas I think a lot of studios might have delegated that so to speak to a whole committee worth of people yeah. making the film uh if you're an independent filmmaker it's a passion project every single one is a passion project you're not doing any of them for a paycheck or like a hired gun these are all films that you love of every five of your being near your babies and you want to see them all the way through essentially so yeah it's a lot it's a lot of work but it's it's great work yeah. Now you do everything yourself, like editing, the sound, all, all that fun stuff, or do you got a crew that you work with yeah. or? Yeah. So <laughs> what I learned early on in my filmmaking career, I think, is that there is absolutely nothing wrong with delegation <laughs> uh, as far as production is concerned. Uh, I know, I know a lot of people personally, uh, a lot of filmmakers in my, uh, circle of friends who are a jack of all trades you know they they shoot it they edit it they do the sound mixing they they just do it all i personally learned i have a wheelhouse and i think my wheelhouse is uh directing working with actors uh screenwriting and uh i kind of need help when it comes to cinematography when it comes to editing i have uh, people I trust who, uh, you know, are the DPs or the cinematographers 
and I have editors as well. So I, I, I rely on other people uh, to essentially, I'm always, um, we're always in collaboration, but I need somebody to do the technical stuff, <laughs> if that makes sense. I'm yeah. not, I'm not some whiz kid who, who, who just knows how to do everything. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I definitely, uh, I definitely love collaborating. I think that's 100% necessary in this, in this field because films are not like painting. They're not like writing a book or a novel. Um, they're not even like being, I mean, I guess if you're in a band, it's different, but if you're just like a solo musician, it's not the same thing. Um, films are 100% a team effort and a collaboration. Um, and there's just no way around that, I think. No. Cause, um, now did you go to school for film or? Did yeah. You... Yeah. Yeah. So I went to, uh, Bowling Green up, uh, north towards Toledo, um, area in Ohio. And, uh, yeah, I studied film production. Uh, I also serve in the Ohio National Guard. So I was doing ROTC, um, during my college years. So I, I think I didn't really, I'm going to be fully honest. I don't think I got the most out of my film school career. Cause I was really busy with, with, uh, ROTC <laughs> more than I wanted to be. Um, but, uh, I, when I got out of college, I think I really started to really want to learn more about the craft of filmmaking and really take it seriously. I, 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 when I got out of college, I realized I want to do this as a profession. This is what I want to do for my living. Uh, not just as a, you know, hobby or, or something that is fun. I would love if I could do this and uh, make money at it. Uh, so that's when I started kind of connecting with people in my area. Luckily I met uh, uh, a producer in the area uh, named Erica Bach. Um, and she really connected me with a whole bunch of people that I probably wouldn't have met otherwise. Um, and that that's really the conception of kind of my filmmaking journey but like i said i i had film projects i had to make for school and stuff um one i made in school called prayer uh was sh actually shot on 60 millimeter film black and white which was really cool i think i took it for granted at the time um but yeah i mean it was it was it not gonna it was a great experience there uh they, it's a really good school uh for filmmaking uh and studying film production because it's very hands-on um but yeah i really wish if i could go back i mean hopefully it's not going to hinder me from doing great things later on but um if i could go back i'd really like to take advantage of shooting on film or some the stuff that they just provided to us mm -hmm. that, um is hard to get a hold of now i mean shooting on film as an independent is 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 uh something i really 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 want to do um but of course it jacks up the prices. <laughs> so yeah, I um, <clears throat> was going to put together a short film and stuff. And I was like, man, I was like, end up finding an eight millimeter project camera. I was yeah. going to record. I had all this stuff. And then I was like, a friend of mine looked at me, goes, do you know how much it costs to make an eight millimeter film or even yeah. just to record in that? And I was like, no. And I started looking up the cartridges and stuff. And he goes, that's just the cartridges. That's not the, 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 you know, development and all that stuff like that. And I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. There's filters that can make it look like. <laughs> exactly. That's what I've been stuck doing essentially. Um, and yeah, like you said, I mean, you, you think about it, it's, it's, you know, you have these ideas. Oh, it's, you know, shoot on film. What's, what's the, I don't understand why it's so expensive, but then you, you think about the, yeah, the, uh, developing the film, mm -hmm. uh, sending it to a film lab. Uh, and if you're an independent production, you'll be lucky if you get dailies. You know, mm -hmm. you don't know if what you're shooting is 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 really uh, being achieved. Because, yeah. I mean, it's not like you have a, a digital monitor. Um, you have your viewfinder. <laughs> and, you know, that's, 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 that's pretty much it. But, I mean, it, it's something that if 
I know if I ever, you know, like when I get the budgets to shoot on film, I 100% will. Um, it's just, yeah, right now. Um, and I think that's the story with most people um, uh, shooting on digital and doing your best in the posts to kind of make it look like film. So yeah. it's, it's one thing that has as much as I like film, I believe that, that with, you know, pretty much everybody, I mean, they're talking about, you can, you can legitimately, I can make a movie right now, which yeah. is that um, I got the software on my computer and, you know, years ago, that would have cost you a fortune. You had to get the camera, you had to get the film. And then you would have hoped that, you know, you know, more, more than a couple takes and you didn't waste that much film and, and all that stuff. Now you can film an entire movie for very little. And I think that has opened up the independent film market so much. And then now you have, uh, you don't have, you know, I was a manager at a video store for years and I remember getting, there was always the catalogs of all the new movies coming in. I want you to buy this. I want you to buy that. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, I was uh, uh, through Hollywood Video, so they told us what we were going to walk, we were going to get. <laughs> and, and when that went away, I always thought that okay, this means the end of independent film, because when and then now with you know all these streaming channels, they're looking for you know, um, you got like Tubi and Plex and all these that are taking in all this you know work that other people are doing. I think it's opening up a lot more people to be able to work in film and stuff again. And I, I'm, no, I'm <laughs> no, no, I mean, I totally, I totally agree with you. I mean, it's, it's undeniable the digital revolution, so to speak, and how it changed our filmmaking landscape. Um, it's democratized. Mm -hmm. filmmaking. Um, like you said, you pulled out, you know, our iPhone. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the filmmaker, Sean Baker, um who he made a film called the florida project and tangerine uh a couple of years ago but he shot tangerine on an iphone uh yeah. and it and it looks really good like it, it it he put of course um adapter on the on the lens and everything but it it it's a great film and and <clears throat> it's a testament to if you have a good story to tell and you know how to tell a story it really doesn't matter what you shoot on it, mm -hmm. it really doesn't um and i guess the only negative i'd have to say of the kind of democratization of filmmaking is that it it's a vast 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 pool um of stuff <laughs> um <clears throat> and that means you're gonna have to do me and everybody around me is gonna have to think about ways they could stand out and mm -hmm. in ways they can be a singular voice among, you know, thousands of, of films released a year, uh, just due to the, you know, everybody has the capability to make films and that's great, but it's also, um, like, um, I guess for an example, uh, are, are you familiar with the works of, uh, Wes Craven at all? Yeah. Uh, like the early stuff. So, yeah. I mean, last house on the left, um, you know, uh, Hills Have Eyes. Eyes. Really, yeah. yeah, yeah, I love Hills Have Eyes. It's, it's a great it's, movie. It's it's really great. Um, and I really, just early Wes Craven is really interesting to me because um, he was obviously independent. Last House on the Left was, mm -hmm. you know, a very small budget. Um, uh, you know, uh, Buy Your Booster Out of Filmmaking. And actually, Sean S. Cunningham was his producer who ended up doing Friday the 13th yep. uh, films. So they, they both had pretty significant contributions to the horror genre but i guess where i'm going with this is that what i mean given the time period it was it was it was made and how controversial it was at the time uh that's why it kind of blew up you know what i mean uh the violence and the, and just the explicit stuff in the film but I don't know if The Last House on the Left, if it was released today, say made on a digital, uh, you know, with the equipment that we have today and the means and all that type of stuff. I don't know if it would stand out. Um, not that doesn't that's not taken away from the film in general. I just I just don't. I think about that stuff sometimes. I always think, okay, would would that film be as big as it 
as it was, if it was released today, I don't know. Uh, that's, I guess, just up for debate. For debate, um, because not as much people had the means to make films back then. So, um, yeah, yeah, because it's it's relatively easy, and now everybody. Um, I always liked Quentin Tarantino because his film school was that he was a manager at a video store. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. You know, I was a manager at a video store and I was a movie guy and now it's so easy because everybody you know at the touch of a you know a button you can stream a million movies yeah and you know when I was a kid you didn't have that and I think now you know you got all these people going well I I can do this I can do this I can do this well this guy's doing it on the cheap over here I could definitely shoot that you know yeah and So film school for the, the guys that like me or, you know, that grew up in the video store era and, and all that stuff like that, it's expanded, but it's also narrowed the field down to what you have technologically mm. to be able to make your movies. Um, like you said, Last House on the Left, uh, one of my favorite movies is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original. That's, I, we could talk about that. For that that's, what, that's, that's also my t- so that's like that's it's that film is perfect oh yeah and the nice part about it is is that's another one that because it was on the graininess it yeah. was there's no soundtrack there's you know yeah. and it looks wrong it's it's fucking intense is that is what it is yeah, yeah. um and, and it's funny because i've uh years ago i did interviews with a lot of the original cast of Texas Chainsaw uh-huh. Massacre and uh, th- like Gunnar Hansen, um, two, the two of the three guys in the bus. Yeah. Not Franklin. I can't remember the other. Two oh guys man. Guys. It's the other guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's funny is one, one the one I was talking to him, one now ran catering. So that really? was <laughs> interesting. Um, and, and they, they talk about this movie that, that was shot on no budget. Yeah. In the middle of summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know 115 degrees at night in a house that had the windows all blocked out and you're just like yeah you know it's it's amazing it's amazing what those what those types of filmmakers did um like toby hooper uh Wes craven uh george a. Romero. i got the night of the dead back there um and i mean there's uh a pool of others because i mean there's they had to get their hands on film. I mean, that, it, it was a totally different uh, scenario, but I do think what you were saying that those types of films hold up and it's, it's last on the left is interesting. I, I don't, I don't want to make this the last on the left talk, but uh, it, it has an interesting um, comedic side to it that I find bizarre. Um, but uh, Texas Chainsaw, it, it completely holds up as far as its intensity. uh, And I think it's, it has a lot to do, like you said, the way it was shot Mm -hmm. on 16 millimeter. uh, It it looks so, so fucking, am I allowed to say that word? Yeah. 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 Yeah, It it looks so, it looks so raw. It just, it it looks like you're watching the thing happen. And it's that, that last scene with, with, uh, I forget the character's name, but uh, the, just basically the, um, the last Burns. yeah 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 um she when she, she she's at the dinner table and she's with the family and they're trying to <laughs> hammer her head but the old man can't do it i mean that stuff's just so it's so good and it's so intense and it's just man that that film uh is incredible and and uh like you were saying with tarantino um he's obviously one of the major uh cinephiles Mm -hmm. you know out there uh filmmakers but he he was a cinephile before you can get your hands on everything i mean it it was way more impressive i think to be a cinephile back then say like martin scorsese is or 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 tarantino is because they actually had to go to either the theater to see it or they had to you know get the i mean tarantino had worked at the vhs store Mm -hmm. or the video store so he could get his hands on stuff Yep. But, you know, it wasn't as, as accessible. I mean, we thankfully we live in a world where everything is super accessible. I mean, I can watch, uh, yeah, you know, 
a Charlie Chaplin film, you know, <laughs> and uh, some right now if I wanted to, uh, and I don't have to look that far. I just have to look it up and, and I can click on it and there you go. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's kind of nice, you know, that's, that's the one thing that's, that's really great, but I also love seeing stuff in theaters. Um, oh, yeah. I, if anything's being shown on the big screen that I haven't seen before, like a classic. So, to, um, I will, you know, be there for sure. Cause I just, I love seeing it in the theater cause it's just a totally different experience. Oh yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my friends give me crap because I'm one of them guys that always goes to like whenever Cinemark has their uh, yeah. kind of events and you get to go see the old movies in, in the theater. Like, man, you literally own that. And I'm like, I know, yeah. but I have not seen it in the theater either A, ever or yeah. since I was a little kid. Right. Um, and it's, it's so much better. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, I have an ongoing joke that um, I've seen Titanic and that's three hours of my life I'll never get back. But every year I watch Blackula and I have watched <laughs> Blackula in the theater, 135 millimeter. Oh, how do you do that? Is, who's, who's playing Blackula? Uh, that was at a horror mm. a decade ago or something like that. It was a long time ago, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, 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 I got to watch it 35 millimeter print. I'm like, heck yeah. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> it was, you're talking about, yeah, that seeing it on a print is a totally, different experience too because um i actually to, to address blackula first i guess is that i saw that actually in film school um i forget what it was for it might i might have been taking an african-american cinema class mm -hmm. uh, and of course that go that's yeah uh black exploitation right. and and <clears throat> horror <laughs> this the, the whole you know he was an african prince and visiting transylvania somehow and, you know becomes a vampire goes back to harlem it's it's great but um seeing a 35 millimeter print is 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 totally different experience because i went to I actually had the pleasure of going abroad in november um i went to uh europe and just several countries but we ended up in london and I went to the BFI, which is the British Film Institute. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the greatest thing ever. And I got to see Frenzy, the uh, Alfred Hitchcock film, mm -hmm. um, on a film print. And it was, you know, when you're watching a film print, it's just totally, totally different. I sound like what a, a hipster probably, but it's just, it's just, it's, it's just so beautiful. And it's just a different, it's a different feeling than just watching on DVD or, or just streaming, you know? <laughs> Now, what genres are you working in currently? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So at the moment, I, I'm i pretty much in the dark comedy realm. Um, I This next one's kind of, it has a crime edge to it, like a crime element, petty crime, mm -hmm. <laughs> so to speak. But it's, um, it's mainly just a dark comedy. Um, the last one was kind of a family dark comedy. Um, I'm, I'm genre lists, so to speak. Um, I want to be, I mean, I grew up admiring and loving genre films. So, I mean, I, I would love to make, uh, genre films. Uh, I, I grew up loving Westerns, uh, a lot. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> it's just I, I connected with them. I, the first film I really remember is uh, Sergio Leone's For a Few Dollars More. Um, that's my personal favorite of the trilogy. Because um, I just think that end duel scene is just oh, incredible. Wow. Um, and just, just John Wayne films, you know, like uh, The Undefeated or uh, Red River searchers just you name it if it's a western i'll watch it <laughs> um i grew up loving war movies uh dirty dozen uh just uh dirty dozen what, what's what's the uh gosh there's another world war two oh the big red one um Gosh, there's another Men on a Mission one I'm no. blanking on right now. But uh, just several. I mean, obviously, the Saving Private Ryan's of the world. Yeah. Um, and 
I I love. I, it took me a while to get into horror. I think uh, I really didn't get into it till college. I really started to appreciate the genre, and uh, some of my favorite filmmakers are of the horror genre. Um, my my greatest filmmaking idol is uh, George A. Romero. Um, just not only for those films, but also kind of what he did uh, as a filmmaker. And, uh, and, you know, I just love cinema. I just, I just love uh, all types of films, but another horror filmmaker, I mean, John Carpenter, Wes Craven, Sam Raimi, um, just, just all the greats, uh, the universal things, you know, Todd Browning, James Whale, just, just, one of my favorite films is Freaks, uh, the uh, 30, I think that's 32, if I'm not mistaken, Louise. maybe 31. Yeah, 32. I but uh, yeah, that movie's something else. <laughs> Have I, you I'm, I'm old enough that uh, I remember having to go track Freaks down on like bootleg VHS. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you talk about movies getting hard to find. I was like, you know, when I was younger, I mean, not even really that young, I was an adult. But we would go, and me and my buddies would do tape trading. We would go hook up with these guys at these conventions, and they're like, hey, I got these movies. You got these. And I remember trying to find, like, Mark of the Vampire and uh, Freaks. And, you know, you're, you're, you're going through all these movies. Uh, uh, Sp- uh, Spider Baby. And now, now a lot of these are now in public domain, and you can get right, yeah. 100, you know, 100 old movies on uh, in a box set for 10 bucks. And we're yeah. going out there busting our butts trying to. <laughs> black market trading for oh yeah uh, uh, that's yeah i mean that was it was i think it's been hard to get a hold of till just like kind of recently it was believe it or not i watched it on hbo max a year and a half or so ago or ha- whenever hbo max came out yeah um, and it it was man it it that talk about an ending uh i'm big on endings i think endings are i think you could forgive Anything a film does, if it has a great ending, I, I I tend to think that because when I think about some of my favorite films, Last Mohicans, uh, For a Few Dollars More, uh, um, Texas Chainsaw, I mean the the list goes on, uh, but they they all have just great endings. You know what I mean? They they have great five ten minute sequences that are just leave you you know, taken aback. You just, you don't know what you just watched. Uh, Freaks is that way where they, they, uh, what they do to that woman <laughs> at the oh, yeah. end is oh, still they're... shocking and just chilling. Oh yeah. When they're coming out and they're coming yeah. through the, like the guy with no arm, he, yes. like, he's, he's yeah. you know, and he's got the knife in his mouth and yes, that, that image is still my head. It's, it's like rainy. It's like, yeah, it's, he's like crawling through the mud. It's, yeah. it's, it's scarring. I can imagine why that was such a taboo film. I mean, it still holds up. Like, I mean, just like any of them. I mean, yeah, it, it's still scary. Yeah, they 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 were talking about it. They're like, this is a movie that could never get made today, ever Absolutely in a million not. years. Absolutely not. And <laughs> and there's that one scene too where uh, they're at that dinner table, that long dinner table, and it's like, one of us, one of us, one of us. Yep. And, man, it, and it's. And it's actually kind of a film that's that's oddly powerful and like moving in a way because uh, it, it's actually very sympathetic towards the. I mean, yeah. it shows them as who they are, but it's it's very loving and sympathetic towards those those people. Yeah, um, normal people are the monsters. They and are. The <laughs> they are, are the, the the good guys. You know, big time, big mm-hmm. time the monsters. So it's yeah, that one's really stuck with me. Um, but yeah, as far as the genres I work in, uh, right now um, I'm kind of dark comedy. I don't know why. Uh, maybe that's just um, I know when I want to do a genre, I kind of want to do it right. I suppose I, I want to do it uh, properly. So if I were to make a western, I'd want to make a proper western with a good budget and, and all that type of stuff. Or you could do low, um, but I just haven't. Uh, dip my feet in there yet but you know never know <laughs> yeah um 
I've talked to other people on this. Do you have a? Do you find it hard to write comedy, or do you write the comedy? So, you know what? I don't want to sound <laughs> arrogant or anything, but not really because I my comedy isn't. Um, and this isn't a knock on other types of comedy, but it's not, I guess, like Anchorman mm-hmm. type of comedy. It's not like over the top type of comedy. It's more um, subtle comedy. It's more comedy due to circumstance. So maybe if I had to compare my comedic sensibility, be closer to, I'm not as good as these people. <laughs> I'm not saying that, but um, it'd be closer to the sensibility of Kubrick or the Coen brothers. It'd be more just kind of, just cold or just maybe just dumbish people making dumbish mistakes <laughs> and we're kind of just laughing along with it um and i i i find comedy and mundane and uh kind of trivial things so to me so here here's a, a example i think that people talk about food a lot um that's something i've kind of realized when you meet a total stranger, I feel like you either talk about the weather or food because, you know, everybody likes food, you know, yeah. so, you know, you can talk about food with anybody. Um, and I just, I find conversations with people go at length about food um, to be funny. I, I don't, I, maybe I just have a weird uh, sense of humor. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah, I just kind of just write what I think is funny and hopefully other people think it's funny is, is kind of the short answer <laughs> to yeah. that. We have, um, at my, at my shop, there's always the ongoing joke that we are going to film the shop because some of the, some of the stuff is just hilarious, but I'm like, but will it work? Would it work on film? Because we think it's funny at the moment. Right. Would it be funny <laughs> if, we, <laughs> if we tried to reproduce it yeah. in film? And, you know, cause it's, it's a lot of the, the, spontaneity of the of the event and it's it's you know the the group of people that are involved and 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 stuff like that and you know we have a very eclectic group of people that come through the door um so there's certain things that that you know some people think is hilarious other people would find massively offensive right 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 it's it's a delicate balance yeah (laughs) um yeah, it. I I have met a lot of people in my young life. Maybe maybe that's because I've you know my army service. Uh, I I have met cast of characters, and like you said, I mean the conversations that take place in those circumstances could be oh, hilarious, yeah. but incredibly dark. Oh yeah, but believe me, my 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 oldest son was in the navy for eight yeah. Years. So <laughs> he he he's he has a horribly dark sense of humor so. yeah yeah maybe that's that's maybe that's that's just kind of the trend and then i think that's um that's where my writing comes from uh i i find so i guess example of my sense of humor or just where my sensibility lies i think the shining is hilarious <laughs> from start to finish it's i'm laughing my ass off the entire time um and I don't think everybody else is necessarily, but uh, I think that movie is hilarious. <laughs> See, that's where I'm at on uh, Hereditary. Yes, I think that movie. Yeah. I think that movie is hilarious at the end. I laugh my butt off. My friends are like, "That's a set." I'm like, "It is a family drama at the beginning with hilarious moments throughout." <laughs> Absolutely, even yeah. the family drama stuff's funny. Oh yeah, everybody. I mean, everybody's. It's so fucked up, but I mean, that's why it's hilarious because. It's, I, I find humor in what makes us human and what makes us flawed and, and what makes, you know, all of us are, all of us have said nasty stuff. You know, oh, yeah. to people. And, and my last film was very much about that. It was about what people say in the moment, um, which is really messed up and damaging to people's psyche. But uh, if you're an outside, if you're from the outside looking in, it's kind of funny. <laughs> so it's an all intention behind that one. <laughs> you see that that's the way it is with us is there, there's moments in, you know, that I would love to record that I would love that. I think are hilarious. Yeah. 
but somebody outside, it would be the other way. Somebody outside would look at this and be like, oh my God, I can't believe they just said that. That's so, and, uh, and we're <laughs> laughing our butts off. Right. And everybody involved knows they're in on the joke. So it's fine. But right. if you're not, <laughs> and you know, people think it's hilarious, but then there'd be the people who think it's hilarious for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> you know what? I would say to that is that <laughs> the people who don't laugh, they can find other stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? The people will come and, and laugh at your, I'm sure there's other people that share <laughs> your sense of humor. That That's what you really have to hope for as a filmmaker or creator is that, um, especially if you're like, I think if you're, I don't want to be like, I'm a real artist or whatever, but I mean, I think if you are a real artist that, you're not necessarily worried about if everybody's going to like it. I mean, because the, even the people who are trying to be likable, like Spielberg's per se, you know, um, which I'm not knock Spielberg. Jaws, one of my favorite movies, okay. <laughs> just to say. But, um, you know, there are people that don't like him. You know what I mean? There's there are people that absolutely hate Spielberg because uh, of, you know, the schmaltzy stuff or what, whatever, you know what I mean? But, um I think you just have to roll up the punches and just take the fans you're going to get and, uh, and, you know, try to please them, so to speak, or, or just yourself. Cause yeah. I think people are either going to connect to your personality and your, your vision mm -hmm. or they're not, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I think there's probably going to be people down the line who watch my films, uh, and will be like, this is stupid. Uh, this is, unwatchable <laughs> uh i'm sure there'll be somebody down the line like that and uh and i'm sure there's gonna be that weird teenager who's like i like this you know what i mean this is this is i connect with this so i that's what that's all i'm hoping for <laughs> now you were talking about making a western so do you want to make a western that's a john ford film you know mm -hmm. the classic uh, uh john wayne movie or do you want to make a sergio leone over the top <laughs> bloody uh western that's a great question um you know what i love both uh i love the john ford my one of my i keep saying one of my favorite films i must have a lot of them but uh <laughs> my favorite film is one of them is uh my darling clementine uh man who shot liberty balance like those films it, they they if if your eyes are are dry after them i don't know if you have a soul you might have to you might have to check with somebody but, um, and of course the Leody th films are essential, but I feel like Tarantino's already kind of, <laughs> kind of like taken that and been like, this is my thing too, by the way. Um, so I think if I were to make a Western, it would have to be my Western. Um, and it might have a bit of both. Uh, it might have a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe an acid Western type deal or uh, kind of the way the Coen brothers treated the Western. Um, I think just the Western is, is such a interesting genre because I think each individual filmmaker put their own personality on it. And that's why I think it's so interesting is that, you know, John Ford put his personality on it. Howard Hawks put his personality on it. Um, the Coen brothers, Tarantino, uh, uh, Jim Jarmusch made Dead Man, which is like a yeah. completely different Western onto itself. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think, I guess a good answer to that <laughs> is that um, if I'm going to make a Western, I want to make sure it's the right Western. I don't really want to do what others have done because they've done it better. So I don't want to try to be Leone because Leone is the, the, the maestro and Ford is also an American master. So, I mean, it's a hard thing. It's, it's, it, I heard a, a filmmaker once say, um, if you're going into the Western genre, you're dealing with uh, some of the greatest films of all time. You're dealing with some of the greatest filmmakers of all time. So, uh it's it's definitely uh something to be weary of i think <laughs> yeah it's it's funny because uh um 
I was watching um, at the shop the other day, um, uh, Young Guns 2. Yeah. yeah. And, and um, it's funny because we, we were watching that and um, I they were talking about, oh, man, I, I love this movie. And so I was like, yeah, it's like, man, I was like, I always like these kind of like pop pop westerns, you know, like the Young Guns movies, the yeah, yeah. the um, Tombstone, which I love. But, uh, yeah. Everyone, I mean, Tombstone's fucking great. I mean, yeah, Tombstone. I know people who don't like westerns and like Tombstone. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was like, but now I was like, I, I, I grew up on the, um, I was never a big fan of the John Wayne stuff. Yeah. I, I grew up in a time where late night television, I started watching the uh, spaghetti westerns. Yeah. And then I had to explain to a guy what a spaghetti western was. So then I found like uh, uh, Django Death comes a uh, an oh uh, one of the one of the many Django films yeah <laughs> uh, one of the only ones with Franco Nero in it. I was like, oh yeah 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 because he's only in two I believe. Yes, yeah, so I think it's Prepare a Coffin. Yeah, you know, Prepare a Coffin. And uh, <laughs> then they then there was other Franco Nero ones that he did that they just renamed. Um, Django, yeah, Django. Absolutely. Then yeah. there's other ones that are just kind of close, but they look alike that they call right. Django. Right. Uh, there's like 50 Django's. It's, yeah, it's but it, but there's only one. Django. One, the Sergio Ferrucci Django, which is yes. incredible. And uh, I, I brought that up, and they were just like going, "What is this?" I'm like, "This is Django," and they're like, "Like the Tarantino movie?" I was like, "No." <laughs> I, I, I was like, the Tarantino's movie is based on a completely different Western that I yeah. cannot say the name of. Yeah, in this story. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I can't either. So. It's the ballad <laughs> of, and then I'll just yes. end it there. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, and With, it's uh, funny. Fred Williamson. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I end up turning somebody on to that, and they're like, man, if you can get past the name of this movie, this is a really good movie. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I told you, this is what I grew up on. Yeah. <laughs> those movies are i mean i love i i i love uh spaghetti westerns I, i'm i'm like a spaghetti western nut like i'll watch the bad quality ones on amazon prime that are definitely public domain or whatever oh, yeah, definitely uh, public domain yes but my god um have you seen death rides a horse yeah that that first of all lee van cleese one of my favorites second of all that score by ennio morricone doesn't deserve that <laughs> the film doesn't deserve that score it's it's like one of the great operatic you know <laughs> it, put it next to Pacini if, if, in my opinion like it, it's it's incredible uh he, Tarantino isn't Kill Bill uh but it's my god that 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 score um but yeah like like you're saying uh did you did you ever get back in the John Wayne at all um, I do like uh, the man who shot Liberty Valance. Mm -hmm. I, I I appreciate that much later in life. Um, yeah. But I just, um, I, I there there was something about the John Wayne movies I found too squeaky clean. I guess yeah. <laughs> they're very squeaky clean. Yeah, <laughs> and no one because I was I was one of them kids that that um, you remember the time I don't know how old you are, but w when I was a kid, we had the Time Life, the Old West. Yeah. So I yeah. burnt through all those books and studied the West and stuff like that. I was yeah. I was one of those kids. And um you're just like, man, the West was dirty. It's, it's very filthy dirty. <laughs> and um it's funny because I just a couple days ago I rewatched uh Sam Raimi's The Quick and the Dead. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh you're just looking at that, and of course you got the guys who are are the 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 the, the but they're still dirty. Yeah, right. They're always putting in like pomade in their hair to keep their hair because it's you know there's no shower, no nothing. Yeah, you gotta clean a little bit. <laughs> the one dude smiles and every tooth is black yeah. and stuff like that. I'm like, that's what the old west would look yeah. like. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't job Wade cleanly shaven and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Uh, I think the '70s westerns, the American <laughs> westerns, are interesting for that because I think they they capture a very real sense of what the West was like, like uh, McCabe and Miss Miller or um, Dirty Little Billy, uh, the Cold Pepper Cattle Company. There's just a whole bunch of them, like revisionist type Westerns, mm -hmm. Little Big Man, uh, uh, just, just, just several. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they're, they're very dirty, mm -hmm. very grimy, very muddy, 
I, what I liked about those '70s ones is that they were more muddy than dirt, which I, I think that the John Wayne ones are more sand and dirt rather than mud, which is what it would actually be like. Is because they had to put boards down in yeah. like uh, Dodge City or uh, uh, you know uh, De- Deadwood. They had to put those boards down because the mud would just people would get sink in it. So they would have to put boards just to walk because uh, it was so ra- it was rainy and, and all that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> the Wayne films are definitely a different uh, a different look yeah. at the West. <laughs> at least, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I appreciated True Grit because that that one started getting him in a little more. This is one you know later ones, so it got dirtier. Yeah, it was like 68, 69. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was on the verge of being a revisionist <laughs> western, but not necessarily because it still had Wayne. But I think John Wayne made a lot of great films uh, post True Grit in in the seventies, uh, like Cahill, U.S. Marshall, Undefeated, um, uh, Chisholm. Just they all had those types of names, but yeah. <laughs> they, they're all they're they're all just to me. I watch those with my dad, and I, they're they're just they're just a lot of fun. You know what I mean? They're just kind of. I think he's such a great screen presence. Uh, he's funny. He's charismatic. I mean, there's a reason he survived so long as mm-hmm. being a star. You know what I mean? He was just. I think he's just a. Gr- he gets underrated. I think a lot of the time as an actor. Um, because he's, you know, one note or whatever. But, um, I mean, you watch The Searchers, that's a performance, you know what I mean? It's, and so is Red River and uh, The Shootist and just stuff, films like that that are, I think, display more of his, you know, acting talent, I guess. <laughs> uh, so, here, okay, we're going to get to the questions here. This is the ones yeah. I ask all the filmmakers. Yep. Uh, money's no object. Who are you hiring to be in your film? Actors wise. Yeah. Um, work on your film, I should say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, whew, that's I you know what? I, that's hard to say because I, I I don't you can probably tell by the films I'm talking about is and all that stuff is that I really love old actors. So actors from back in the day. Am I allowed to pick those people? Yeah, or no? yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, okay. This way, money and time are no object. <laughs> okay. Great. 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 We're in a parallel universe. This is yes. awesome. Um, well, uh, I would love to work with Warren Oates. Um, he was a character actor. He was the drill sergeant in Stripes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was in the Wild Bunch. Uh, really love to work with him. Um. I think I would like to do something interesting with uh, John Wayne. Uh, Maybe have him do a role that's completely out of his wheelhouse. Maybe that would have been interesting. Um, I like a lot of character actors. So Harry Dean Stanton, uh, he's an alien. Um, uh, Sterling Eden, who is in The Godfather. Uh, and several other the killing uh stuff like that uh al pacino in his prime 70s um uh, de niro in his prime 70s uh this might sound like an odd one but peter boyle (laughs) i love peter boyle yeah yeah i just i really like him and i like his look uh, I, I just really love, and probably Gene Hackman. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, I didn't name any actresses, but uh, I really would like to work with uh, Naomi Watts for some reason. I think her performance in, in uh, Mulholland Drive is, in, is incredible. Um, I would really have liked to work with, um, believe it or not, Jane... Jane Fonda probably back in her prime, like the the, the late 60s, 70s. So I just think she was really good. Um, and uh, gosh, hmm, I, I'm blanking. Oh, can't believe I didn't say this first. Jack Nicholson. 
<laughs> Jack Nicholson is the holy grail of actors, in my opinion. He's just somebody I admire. He's the greatest actor in my mind. Um, and lastly, I'll just say two people, Humphrey Bogart and James Cagney. I'll stop it there. <laughs> uh, well, see, the other question was, if uh, money's no object, what genre are you making or what movie you're making? But you already answered a Western. Yeah, so I, yeah I did, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> Now, do you ever, and I ask this because yeah, I asked you, your John, your John Ford or your, your uh, Sergio Leone, do you ever look when you're like writing a script or something and be like, okay, this is my, um, you know, my carpenter, you know, or this is my tribute to George Romero or my, you know, do you ever look at that? Oh, oh, totally. I mean, I think you can't avoid it. It's just, it's just like anything. I mean, if you're uh, a, an opera singer, you're going to look up the Pavarotti or, you know what I mean? Like you can't, you can't help but just look up the people. I mean, the, my last one, I, I very much was thinking in the John Cassavetes realm uh, mm -hmm. and Robert Altman um, and uh, a little bit of, I guess, Werner Herzog. <laughs> uh, it sounds like a weird blend, but uh i guess it made something um and this next one it's i i'm really kind of in the vein of um hal ashby um jim jarmusch and kind of the laurel and hardy films uh or like three stooges type uh comedy films that are like you know an hour long or something and they're just they're just really fun to watch <laughs> and and they just put you in a good mood um mine's not necessarily like that um but and it's not kind of early cone brothers so uh blood simple and uh um raising arizona miller's crossing yeah fargo hey crime wave come on Crime Wave. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess they, I, you know, I haven't seen Crime Wave yet, but. They, they wrote it and Sam Raimi directed it. So. Yeah, I know. So I need to see that. <laughs> uh, I remember watching that as a kid and being like, what am I watching? And then as I got older, I'm like, yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. I don't know what I was missing this whole time. <laughs> you ever sit back and rewatch a movie that you haven't watched in a while and just totally get it now? You know, yeah. just like, yeah. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to think what. I had that with recently. Um, man. I, I Gosh, there's a film I was completely wrong. You know what? It was um it was really scream cuz I I had watched my mom scream was on all the time. I don't know why. <laughs> like it was on like showtime. It was just on during the day. So maybe I got like burned out by it, but mm -hmm. then I kind of rediscovered Wes Craven um, and just started watching all types of his films, uh, Return to Scream, and that that last whole section in the house is is just great filmmaking. It's it's really probably his his peak, I'd say, as far as what he did. But it could be wrong. <laughs> That's just my opinion. <laughs> well, it, it's funny because uh, I watch. Um... Cursed Films on Shudder. Have you ever watched that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've watched um, a couple episodes. Did, did you watch the one on uh, Serpent and Rainbow? Not yet, because I, I didn't uh, – I've watched – that's a season two. I think I watched yeah. like, season one. But I want to – is it uh, – well, I didn't I didn't know there was any like type of uh, – Is it, was it a bad production? I'm not even sure. Um, a, a little bit, because, I mean, it was filmed in Haiti. It was filmed during, you know, a, a, just after an uprising and all this stuff like that. And yeah. – uh, and knowing full well that that um, it's like finding out that, you know, I knew um, Wes didn't want to be pigeonholed into a uh, um, horror guy because he did. Uh, what's the. Uh, he did, um, he did the, 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 the high school musical one. I can't. What? Music from the heart. Yeah. Music from, yeah. And 
you know, because he, he went into that one and he's like, and then, you know, he's just like, ah, I'm, I guess I'm the horror guy now. Yeah. And that's just where after, because it was after basically Serpent and Rainbow where he was just like, yeah, this, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm doing, I guess. So, <laughs> he just accepted it. He's like, you know what? At least I'm making films. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, you know, that's like knowing full well that there, there are horror movie directors out there they had every intention of, uh, you know, like George Romero. George Romero didn't want to be the horror nope. guy. Um, you know, John Carpenter. I mean, he did yeah. Elvis. Um, yeah, he loved he, Western too. Yeah. Cronenberg um, directed a drag racing film back in the day. So, yeah. 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 He's coming back, which is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what's funny is watching him on Star Trek Discovery. As a, he's not that. I yeah. Have no idea. yeah, he's like a, um, I guess a psychiatrist or something, and he talks to the crew, <laughs> and and he's he's literally like a like a psychiatrist that doesn't have time to deal with these people. So he's like yeah, very matter of fact like on, on lots of things. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I always thought he was under underappreciated as an actor too, because he was always yeah, 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 yeah. He's been in some stuff, and he's he's pretty good. Like yeah. he's just like got a good screen presence yeah especially he made a great villain in nightbreed okay. i've not seen that oh my. clive barker's nightbreed you've never seen you need to go find watch that uh, I, I, I just kind of got into clive barker you know not too recently so i i need to definitely catch up on his on his films don't get me wrong they're they're hit and miss hellraiser one two <laughs> uh nightbreed um Kind, kind of about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he didn't, he's more, I mean, he's also an author, so I guess yeah, like, yeah. He, he never just fully was like, I'm a filmmaker, so I mean, well, maybe that's it. Yeah, he, he um, his thing is that a lot of people just took his properties and just went stupid with them, so a yeah. lot of his stuff got underappreciated till later. Right, he got bastardized. Mm -hmm. It's like, I love the <laughs> the one midnight meat train except for the ends a little weird but yeah i i mean um there's this really great thing i found on youtube um not too long ago and it was essentially just a a group dinner with john carpenter clive clive barker roger corman and uh, two authors and it was so intriguing because they were just talking about the horror genre, storytelling, and they all just kind of came up. They went around and, and did like a sign, not a, uh, like a telephone with a, making a film story. So it's really interesting. Uh, if you, if you get the time, check it out. But it's, uh, check it out. It's very cool. <laughs> um, I don't know if this, this uh, when, are you, when are you showing uh, Night of the Living Dead? Yes, so I'm showing Night of the Living Dead tomorrow at the, uh, if anyone's local listening, uh, at the uh, Historic Plaza Theater in, uh, in uh, Miamisburg, Ohio. It's, 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 right, it's right next to Dayton and kind of in between Dayton, Cincinnati area. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically just me presenting it and talking about the history of the film and the background behind Romero and what he did in Pittsburgh uh, with his independent film making uh, family, really. I mean, like, the, you know, Tom Savini, uh, he wasn't on night, but no, he, he uh, day of the dead or dawn of the dead. And he, dawn day. He was, yeah. He's, he's Russ Striner, uh, Hensman. Um, yeah. All them guys. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and he, he really fostered that community and, um, and um, yeah, so I, I'm, it's kind of just a night celebrating him, but it's also a fundraiser for uh, my film, uh, Sunday Dinner, which uh, we're hoping uh, we could start production on um, some, sometime in the fall, winter time um, of uh, 2022. Uh, and it will you know, be released 2023, so. Yeah, that's just kind of what we're 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 pushing for, and this is just kind of the beginning of our uh, kind of fundraising. Uh, we're getting financing uh, from other places, but we kind of just want we want to involve the community and and really help 
get this film, make this film of a, a local community collaboration and, and just ensure that, you know, everybody in our community knows that, you know, this is going to be, you know, a film that we could all be proud of and, uh, and could go places and, and hopefully, you know, exceed our Ohio market <laughs> and, uh, and just go around the world and, uh, you know, just make a film that we're all proud of. That's like really the main thing. It's just. Now, uh, have you, have you, are you filming now or? No. So we're, we're in pre-production right now. So um, what's, what's crucial for us right now is casting. We have two leads casted. Um, there's some bit players, but we, we need our last lead. Um, so we're still in the midst of that. Um, it's a hefty role, so we don't want to rush it. We're, we're, we're looking all around. Uh, you know, it's, it's like our, uh, um, what's it called? Who's that? Who's that woman from, uh, Gone with the Wind? Vivian Lee. Vivian Lee. Well, the, the Scarlett O'Hara. We're looking for our Scarlett, you know what I mean? (laughs) So, uh, uh, yeah. So hopefully we find the Vivian Lee, so to speak. And uh, different role completely, but <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So that's that's kind of where we're at right now. But um, Look, yeah, it's it's kind of cool because Dayton has such a large independent movie, um, you know, scene. I guess I want to yeah. say. Um, so there are a lot of really good, you know, under the radar actors, actresses out there. That, you know, it, it's funny because you're just like looking, I was like, man, you know, I've seen you in so many movies and, you know, your day job is working at Elder Bearman's. Or, you know, <laughs> right, right, right. And it's like, man, I, if, you know, it's like those, those people who are always on the cusp, but, but, you know, the fact that you, you are in Ohio. And <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah. I mean, I think, so I, I held an event in March called Regional Cinema and it was pretty much just displaying other filmmakers and stuff mm-hmm. in film. And it was to kind of say to your point, like there is incredible talent mm-hmm. where we're at. We're, we can't help, I guess, where we were born or where we're from. Uh, so uh, we got to make, I think like, like Romero did, he made the, he was in Pittsburgh and he mm-hmm. used for crews, Pittsburgh actors. He had eventually moved to Canada like later in his life. Mm-hmm. But um all of like the classics that we know and love were all made in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, he, he never, he never bent, he never just said, fuck it. I'm moving out to Hollywood. Screw you guys. (laughs) I'll, I'll I'll come back. You know, blah, blah, blah. But he, he, he really, he, and he found great actors. Dwayne um, is Jones, I believe. Um, Yeah. yeah, He's, I mean, in, in night of living dead, he's, he's incredible. And, he was just, you know, a local uh, actor in Pittsburgh, yep. and and he gives a incredibly realistic, grounded performance for a performance in 1968. I mean, <laughs> he's acting not to discount the actors and uh, the other actors in the film, but he's acting, you know, circles yeah. around uh, <laughs> these guys and gals. I mean, it's 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 really um, something. I, I, re- I rewatched that the other day, and. Uh... I always took Barbara as just the comatose, you know, and then it was one of the ones where you're just like, you're rewatching it and you're like, she's dealing with that in the best way she can. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just like, what would you do? Yeah. You, would, you know, you just watched your brother die. Yeah. And like, you would be like, oh, I'm just going to have to go, you know, you, you <laughs> losing it. And, and, you know, with everything she goes through and you're just like, I always took it as just a bad actress. And then I rewatched it. I'm like, that is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, she's, she's going through some shit. Let, let, yeah. let her be, you know? <laughs> exactly. It, it's more, uh, I, I, I love, listen, man, I, I love the performances and it, like, cause there's something to be said about hamming it up. So I like the hamming it up, but Dwayne is like just a different breed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Completely. Um, and, and I'm sure, you know, the backstory is that like, they weren't really 
anticipating or planning on making it a racial no 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 deal. it was just um, happened by happenstance he was the best actor they knew um and uh it yeah i mean it was in that that ending my favorite part of the film is the end not just like the end when he mm-hmm. blah blah but um don't want to spoil it for me but, but uh just just the whole part with the militia mm-hmm. and like, drinking coffee like that that's the romero comedic edge that i love is that like he just always he captures the absurdity of stuff so well um, yeah because you know that's what it would be really like i mean yeah people would, yeah Absolutely. And mm-hmm. especially like we're from Ohio and like, I, I, you know, I live in, you know, I've lived in Ohio my whole life. And I know a lot of people that if there's a zombie outbreak, they begin to get with their buddies. If they're, oh yeah. If they're AR-15s and they go into town on these. On oh these. yeah. Yeah. It, it's definitely I, like it, there, there are people, I know people who have the whole thing planned. Should there be a zombie <laughs> outbreak? They have their, you know, they have like, you know, their bug out bag over here and they got yeah. their stuff and they're like, they're ready to go. And I'm like, that's not real, man. That's not real. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's, it's really hilarious. It, it, it's so, the ending is so poignant and like still, still very relevant and just, it's, it stands the test of time. I think, and I think the ending is what makes it stand the test of time. I'm not saying the whole film is incredible, but the ending is really, like I said, a great ending Mm -hmm. makes a film, I think. And that is one of the great endings. So um, it's, it's, uh, and and the best part about it is is they had every opportunity to shoot that in color too. And it's still black and white. I love the black and white in that film. Um, It's, it, it's very uh, neo-realist almost. Mm -hmm. Um, And cinema verite it's almost like you know breathless mm-hmm. type or uh one of those like french new wave films or something like that or or italian neorealist like it's just kind of very naturalistic type black and white which is uh i think inc- it just it just has a certain feeling to it like i know i'm showing it in may but it, it reminds me of october every time i watch it you know it's just yeah. it, it, it feels like halloween time when you watch it so. I, I, that's one of the movies I guarantee you in my lifetime I've watched it a hundred times because it's so rewatchable. It's, yeah. it, it's it's so rewatchable. I mean, it's 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 it, I, it's obviously you know gory and all that type stuff, but I mean, it's it's also in the same. It's it's, it's like Bosco <laughs> chocolate syrup, uh, you know. But uh, of course, that was shocking to audiences mm-hmm. back then. I mean, it, the history behind it is that it didn't get. So the MPAA was on the verge of being made into was on the verge of being in action, but it wasn't directly at the time. So like kids were watching this on a matinee <laughs> and like not knowing what the hell they're watching. And Roger Ebert, his initial review of it was negative because uh, uh, he was watching a bunch of kids and he's yeah. like, he felt wrong. He's like, this movie is just wrong. It should not be being played at matinee. Um, but later on, he gave it a great review uh, in hindsight because of, you know, everything. Yeah, they they do that a lot. They did that with Alien. They did that with uh, The Thing. They did that with, uh, you know, all these horror movies. That end up, uh, Halloween, I think, got a horrible. Yeah, yeah. initially and all that. Yeah, because, like, I, I think that, I mean, say what you will about, I'm not against, like, critics at all. But I think a lot of the time there's like an intelligentsia behind it where like, you know, it's a genre. Mm -hmm. So especially back, it was way more prevalent back then. Uh, Like, Oh, it's a genre film. Oh yeah. I remember um, when uh, Silence of the Lambs came out. Silence of the Lambs, that's a horror movie. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says. That's a horror movie. This thriller of the year. It was never called a horror movie. It was always, a, a the, the suspense thriller and you're just like yeah. dude that's a horror movie he eats that dude's face you know it's, like, <laughs> it's totally a horror film and i just watched that recently and i reminded how that's like moved up to like one of my favorite movies just because like it's it is by far the most subversive best picture winner of all time mm-hmm. because there's a man dancing around with his 
junk tucked in. <laughs> junk tucked in. It, it, it's just like you never see that in a Hollywood film, and you probably never will. And Jonathan Demme started with Roger Corman, mm-hmm. and you're telling me that that's not inspired by some of his gothic Edgar Allan Poe stuff? You're wrong, because it is. I mean, the the whole like you said, bite his head off the blood and the and the the the, the prison cell he walks into is mm-hmm. totally out of like uh how you know pit of the pedestal or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause it's all in it's all in stone. Yes. Instead, and, and plexiglass instead of <laughs> right. being like, you know, concrete and bars. Right, yeah, right. Because yeah. Michael Mann made Manhunter, yeah. which was like he I, did it the more, you know, cold mm-hmm. uh, postmodern way but yeah demi embraced the gothic element of silence of the lambs and i think that it's totally a horror film great film mm-hmm. and it's incredible film uh from start to finish um but yeah <laughs> yeah the, 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 like i said that was one thing i, I grew up on it is uh the people that did not want to classify anything as a horror movie that obviously right. was horror movies because that was a bad you know, oh, that's bad. If you're a horror movie, that's 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 not good. And then, then I went through the whole thing where you know horror movies became the the norm. And then you know, every, then there was just way too many of them, and they got watered down. We started getting PG thirteen horror movies that had little to no shock value or anything like that. But you know, it, that, it, I think it's interesting too, because like like you're saying, like when you were growing up, it was it was all horror movies, stupid uh maybe not that simplified but yeah pretty much um but now with a24 uh that that um like uh distribution company mm-hmm. they they have a certain gravitas now where mm-hmm. there's there's a new almost subgenre a24 horror yeah where it's, like, yep. it's elevated yeah elevated art, art horror is I like art that. horror right yeah. it's like i love those like lighthouse red terror like those are all great great films um but yeah they're 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 seen as more like i just watched men um last weekend uh interesting movie but um yeah i mean it's it's like elevated horror it's it's horror for the thinking man or whatever you know so um it's it's interesting how things how things uh ebb and flow but i could tell you that you know whatever year the English patient one. I bet there's a horror film that was better than that. Oh yeah. <laughs> that year. But <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> now, now you get it the other way. Now you get horror movies that they're, they're horror movies that I'm like, that's not a horror movie. That's, 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 <laughs> that's a suspense film. I, it, it... Right, right, right. So it's like, it's, it's, I think genre is really, really interesting as far mm-hmm. as what is it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so, because like when you say genre film, technically everything's a genre. Film. Yeah, yeah, everything <laughs> is a genre. But I think when we talk about genre film, we're talking about the distinct genres: mm-hmm. like westerns, horror, war. Uh, yeah, just those those types of genres. Um, but thriller and horror are kind of like always been kind of interwoven. Yeah, or, they were like cousins. You know, they're not. Yeah, they're they're, not, they're cousins. They're not exactly. You know, uh, they're they're yeah they're cousins. They're they're not directly related, but they're related. Uh, you know, like Zodiac is like the David Fincher film is mm-hmm. that horror is a thriller. I'd say thriller, but I mean, there's elements that are totally horror. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But it's like, who's to say? You know, oh. is Jaws a thriller? Or is it a horror? Uh, I'd say thriller, but it has a monster in it. Yep. <laughs> so. Who knows? <laughs> well, it, we we had we had the discussion the other day. Um, it, just because it's a monster movie doesn't mean it's a horror movie. Mm, yeah, and, uh, I was like, I say no. I was like, because I think monster is a whole thing onto itself. Because just yeah. because it's got a monster in it doesn't mean it's a horror movie. Right. But it can have a monster and be a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Because um, uh, going into monster films zombie films which he helped to invent romero um is a subgenre mm-hmm. so, I mean, there's romantic like that warm bodies film that came yep. out i never really saw it but it's not um, bad I, it's not bad uh, okay it's, 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 <laughs> I, I, I watched it once it's it's it i wasn't 
I didn't feel like I wasted an hour and a half. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, mean, I, I might watch it with, with my girlfriend one of these days. Who knows? Uh, but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting because zombie films obviously took a life of their own. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's running zombies. There's, you know, Walking Dead kind of follows the Romero zombie mm-hmm. to a T. So, I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's interesting. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's genre is such a, you could write a 700 page thesis on, on genre, <laughs> probably just one genre alone. I mean, cause it's just, there's so much to discuss oh, yeah. and horror is such a rich genre. It's, it's really maybe the richest as far as like its history and it's, it's lore and, and it's, and it's, fandom i mean there's a there's a massive massive fandom for horror not as much for western <laughs> i might be alone there but not alone but few well you look at you look at cinema as his history of cinema literally almost the moment they were able to start making movies people go you know what we need to make scary stuff you know yeah. it was almost instantaneous yeah you're I mean, right not, not to be honest, they also decided that they almost immediately started to need, need to make porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, you know, they're the same thing. <laughs> I, I watched a documentary on, on the history of cinema, I don't know, like five, six years ago. Mm. And it was literally like like the second or third film that was that was made that they have proof of was almost a porn. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, of I mean, course it was. <laughs> of course it was. Because they had those, uh, I forget what exactly they were called. Before cinema was a thing, mm-hmm. they had these these like look through things, mm-hmm. and like it was. Uh, I wish I knew the name of it, but pretty much just nude women. Like you're just yep. looking at the nude woman, and you had the, the thing you could you could, and it was the two pictures, so it yeah. almost gave it like a three D <laughs> effect. Yep. Yeah, because I mean, it's so like if you get a movie image, like even better, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly, and 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 like you said, horror um, is. It's from the inception of, mm-hmm. of film. It's it's it, it's it's almost inherent, I think, with the moving image. It's like because it's viscera. I think that's why I like horror a lot. Is because it's it's pure viscera. It's pure uh, just feeling mm-hmm. rather than than uh, thinking. I mean, obviously, there there is horror films that make you think and all that type of stuff. But I think what I really enjoy about horror films is that a lot of the time their, their plots are very basic mm-hmm. and, and they're very uh, w- like Texas Chainsaw. I mean, it, it's, it's a perfect example of just incredibly basic premise, mm-hmm. um, but it does so much with that premise. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's just, it's, it's almost um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's in our nature almost, you know what I mean? It's, it's to be scared. And, yeah. and, and there's like that scientific thing where, you know, our, our, like our cavemen or we, you know, we get certain endorphins or whatever, so to speak, when we get scared and that's yep. why people ride roller coasters, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's similar effect for sure. It, this is going to be silly, but I guess not silly, but, um, given the fact that you've studied film in school and stuff, do you ever think that it, it, I don't, I won't say this is gonna be a bad phrasing of this, but the only way, do you ever think it can ruin your viewing experience of a movie because you <laughs> have studied it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've thought about this a lot. Um, like we've been talking about horror a lot. I don't get scared by horror that much. Um, and I think that's like you said. Maybe it's because I've studied it. I know how the sausage is made and packed, mm-hmm. and, and where it's made. Um, so that I'll, I'll even watch, you know, the most in depth or read the most in depth making of, you know, whatever. So it kind of like it kind of makes like it disillusions your whole perception of a film. I think if you're going into it, you know, I, I'm just a guy who likes movies. I don't, or just I'm going to see a movie. It might scare you. It might have an effect on you that's just primal or whatever. But I think when you've made movies and you've studied movies, you might have a different outlook on films. Uh, see, I, I've, I've talked to this filmmaker friend before. 
where it's hard for me to even watch a good film Mm -hmm. or a great film because I think, man, I don't know if I could ever make something that good. And, and, And I know that sounds like crazy or whatever, but when I see a great film, I, I don't, I'm not just, I think like a common viewer is like, Oh, that was a really great film. I love that movie. I watched that film. Like that movie is incredible. I think I need to change what I'm doing because <laughs> this movie is too good. I don't know if I could ever compare to this movie. Um, so <laughs> kind of a bummer, but when you see a bad movie, you're like, all right. I like watching bad movies sometimes. I'm like, you know what? I can do better than that. I know that. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's it's fun sitting down watching movies and you're just like yeah i, I could film that on a weekend I'm not yeah, gonna- right. <laughs> or just like just some movies you wonder <laughs> and i'm not even talking about the small budget ones because i i give a lot of leeway for those mm-hmm. i'm talking like more the big budget ones where i'm like why did you make like why did anybody <laughs> involved make this soulless film <laughs> I, I, my wife and I just watched uh, Escape Room Two, <laughs> yeah. and we the first one wasn't bad. I actually enjoyed right. the first one, right? And it you know it was a mindless horror slash you know I guess adventure type movie, yeah. And it was you know it was eighty minutes that I enjoyed. I had a fun time, <laughs> and um, my wife goes, "Hey, she goes the, the Escape Room Two is on you know, streaming," and I'm like, "Okay, let's watch it. What the hell?" And we're just watching it. And we're like, that was, I could have done something else. I could have done the laundry. I could have done. There's so much other things I could have done. Oh, not? yeah. And, and, and then you watch a movie that, you know, I love um, the movie Stalker. And uh, the uh, Tarkovsky? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, you look at that and you're like, there's not a whole lot to that. No, it's never. just locations being weird in the conversation between yeah. the people, and they don't try hard. Mm-mm. It's it's yeah. le- legitimately like you're wrapped in your your your. Yeah. You no, know, it's holding you. I was like, where this big oh. budget, yeah, where this big budget, you know, I, I don't even know if it's that big of a budget, but you know, there's a lot coming at you all the time, and you're just like. Okay, I'd, I'll go back and watch this on Blu-ray. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, mean, I think like what what you're what you're saying too is like Stalker has a personality. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a, got it heart. Just, you know, it has heart, and that film was just a product. Mm-hmm. And I think I think when you're a filmmaker or you're an artist or even just an artist type, like you know when something's a product and when something's an art a work of art you know what i mean it's 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 night and day i mean i'm not gonna discount films that are out you know currently or whatever but i mean there's a lot of them i see um and i'm just this is a product made by a committee of people uh you can taste it (laughs) in your popcorn and um you watch you know stalker or um you know just a film that like uh, the Northman, uh, the Robert Eggers Viking film. Like, you know, that's Robert Eggers making that movie. You know, it's his personality, mm-hmm. you know, it's his fixations. Uh, it's night and day and it's refreshing. It's refreshing to watch a movie like that. It's refreshing to watch a film with a personality and a voice. And uh, I think not to say that I'm not saying that's, I'm not one of those people like, Oh, it was better back then. But like, um, Obviously, there was a heyday. Like the seventies <laughs> was the heyday for uh, American auteurs, but there's still plenty, plenty of great filmmakers um, with voices. And you know, we just hope with like streaming, hopefully they don't get sh- uh, drowned out by, mm-hmm. I guess, bigger budgeted. Uh, corporation type movies i guess I'm, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a comic book nerd from way back so for oh, yeah, me yeah. i will love comic book movies probably till the day i die um and there's popcorn movies as i call them so they're yeah. movies that you just go in you have fun you watch them like oh, okay i'm good 
yeah I, I got excited for a couple hours you know my friends make fun of me because i watch the fast and furious movies i'm like they're <laughs> dumb i'm not gonna lie it's not like they're they're like you know peak cinema i was yeah. like <laughs> I'm like, it's a dumb movie. I had fun watching it. That's all. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I literally laughed in the last one because they're sitting there yelling about physics. And I'm like, how do you explain <laughs> physics in a Fast and Furious movie? Yeah, like, what's going on? That's like the opposite of what we're doing here. <laughs> I like a movie that can make fun of itself. And that did make fun of itself right then and there. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, yeah, there's, there's totally... I think what I would love to see is just in today's market, not that I control this stuff, but it's just room for both. And yeah. I think that um, not just streaming, but I love there's room for both in the theaters because mm-hmm. um, you see films, like I say, like the Northman that came out last month that did not perform. Um, and to me, that's, that's a bit scary because uh i think that's telling studios and studios listen to their wallet and and they're saying well we let this guy do what he wanted and release it uh you know massively across the country and the world and it didn't perform so maybe we shouldn't do that anymore but i mean i i hope that doesn't happen um i hope the multiplexes uh are kind to the more uh to just more variation, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think that, uh, so, I mean, I've, I've, I've read articles and all that stuff saying that, like, superhero films are, like, the Westerns, mm-hmm. you know, of, of, of today. Um, and, I mean, I guess the only way I would counter that argument is that, yeah, I agree that there are mythos and mm-hmm. stuff like that, and that's, that's totally uh, what the Western was at, at a period of time. Um, but in that same vein, there was a lot of Westerns, but there was also screwball comedies. There was, uh, there was, uh, historical dramas. There was, uh, there was the, the police, all, all those like police genre movies that they had out yeah. there. And, yeah, absolutely. There's crime. There, there's just set. Like, I'm not saying that the studio system was awesome or anything like that. Cause it wasn't, but that there was a massive variation as far as like the types of movies mm-hmm. that they released. Um, so I would just love to see more, um, not to get on soap, but I just like to see more of a variation, I think. And just in theaters. Cause like, obviously there's massive variation in, in streaming and, sh- mm-hmm. and stuff. I mean, you can watch whatever the heck you want. Um, but I'm a theater guy. I I grew up loving the theater. I grew up going to the movies, and I want to see hopefully they, you know, my films on the big screen. You know what I mean? Um, that's that's a dream because uh, that's what we do it for. We do it to show them in the theater if we're filmmakers. I mean, yeah. that's that's kind of the it's kind of the end state, <laughs> so to speak. Um, so yeah. yeah. Um, I don't want to keep you too much longer. Um, where can we see? Can we see your movies that you finished that you've that sure. in your shorts? Or can sure. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, there is the link uh, attached to. Uh, I'm just gonna put it on my uh, bio, but it's it's attached to this uh, recent podcast I released. Um, uh, I'll, after this, I'll, I'll just put it on my uh, bio on my uh, Facebook and my Instagram. Uh, for my film Funeral for Fermansky, uh for free. It's it's just uh, it's a short film, so um, yeah, feel free to watch it. Um, let me know what you think. Rate it on IMDb if you'd like. Um, <laughs> we'll take anything we can. Uh, you know, I just want to like like I was saying earlier. You know, I mean, we make films for an audience. We don't just sit in a room in the dark and make a movie and be like, this is mine. Nobody's ever going to say it. Like, I, I want people to to watch it and I want to know their opinion and and uh, and uh, maybe I'll listen to it. Maybe I won't. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, that will be on my uh, link in my bio. Uh, Johnny Catalano Film is my Instagram handle. Um, and my Facebook is just Johnny Catalano. Um, my Companies pages are 
both called Catalano Film Co. Um, that's my production company. Um, so just go ahead and follow those. If you uh, want any updates on my films or uh, my most recent film, Sunday Dinner. Now, um, when you're, you said you're casting your movie currently, mm-hmm. um, do, do you have open casting or are you yeah. close? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that's a good question. Um, we are, so we have our lead whose name, the character's name is Rob, um, Chad Goodwin, who I've worked with before. And uh, we have our uh, Bob, uh, who's one of the main, we need an open casting for um, a female in her uh, mid to late 30s, uh, um, Caucasian, and that's pretty much the, the physical description. <laughs> um, uh, we just want somebody who's talented, really. I mean, we, we just want somebody who – we're actually been looking a lot – into theater actresses and stuff like that because it's very there's a lot of dialogue um it's kind of a theatrical piece Mm -hmm. so we're really kind of looking for uh an actor actress who can really carry a film and could carry her role and uh you know not to say i don't want to direct or anything but who i don't have to direct a ton and just kind of kind of knows what they're doing you know i mean that that's kind of the actors I like to work with. I like people who are instinctive. I, I like instinctive actors um, who don't think too hard, I think. Cause like, I think a lot of actors could get trapped. Cause I've acted too. So like, I think a lot of actors could get trapped in overthinking stuff and acting should be purely just instinctual. Act- yeah. A little bit yeah. emotional. Um, don't do all this. <laughs> People probably disagree with me, but don't do all this like weird stuff. All right. <laughs> just, <laughs> but, well, you know, just do it if you need to, but if you're just, just, just act. It's the, it's the most, even though this sounds like in proper English, most fun, I feel like funnest should be turned into a word, but <laughs> it's the funnest job on the face of the planet. Hands down acting it's so fun i mean it's it's really fun uh if i got to wake up every day knowing i could act that'd be great <laughs> i make believe every day yeah i know exactly so i mean we can't beat that <laughs> it's great all right well i appreciate you coming on here um talk about your your stuff we'll talk about film for a while for quite a while um <laughs> It, it, it's always it's always cool being able to talk to somebody who you know appreciates film um i i'm one of them guys my, my wife hates it because i overanalyze movies horribly bad <laughs> yeah, yeah um <laughs> she just looks at me she's like just enjoy the movie <laughs> I can't. I don't understand. <laughs> and, and that's it. And she's like, "You got to find out everything you can." About. I was like, "If I like a movie, I do got to find out about every little nook and cranny of that thing." And and it's 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 nice knowing that I'm not the only one. So <laughs> you're not. Trust me, you are not alone, sir. I am also. Uh, I I love film for a very long time, um, and I will probably continue to annoy people with my factoids. I was just, I forget what I, who was I even talking to? My girlfriend, we were watching, um, oh, you were watching Sun Like It Hot. And, and as soon as Tony Curtis popped on the stage, like, that's, that's Jamie Lee Curtis's dad. <laughs> like, uh, I didn't have to say that, but I felt like I had to, you know? <laughs> so, well, <laughs> that's like watching was it, Stranger Things and uh, that last season <laughs> of Stranger Things. And you're like, Man, once you realize that's Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman's kid, you can't not see that that's Ethan Hawke and no, Uma Thurman's No, you can't. You can't. She looks just like Uma. I know, I know. And, and, and it's funny. I was like, just keep Quentin Tarantino away from her feet. We- <laughs> yeah, keep her safe now. Yeah. <laughs> from his wrath of the feet. <laughs> but yeah, I, I it, it, but my wife's like, what? I was like, yeah, I had to find that out because it bugged me because that first episode, I'm like, why does that girl look familiar? And then I'm like, I'm like, 
Oh, oh, that explains. That's Ethan Hawke and Uma Well, that perfectly explains. I mean, like she does. Yeah, I mean, like it. It's it's kind of sh- it's uncanny, really. Oh yeah. It's like, it, if you just dyed her hair blonde, I mean, it's it's, it's basically Uma Thurman. It's 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 weird, but I mean, uh, she's pretty good from what I've seen. Like she's she's yeah. she's got very talented. So we must run in the family. <laughs> be hard to who's your parents ethan hawk and uma thurman yeah <laughs> two really good actors i think ethan Hawke, ethan hawk's one of my like favorite working actors the, the, and he's he just kind of faded into like just doing like really horror movies there for a while it, yeah and yeah. then um he was and then all of a sudden he popped back up on moon Knight as the bad guy and mm-hmm. and uh now he's got the with the black phone that i can't wait to see that's, uh, yeah, that's a horror. That going back to horror, uh, I I love him in uh, First Reformed, uh, and just yeah, all this all this stuff he did uh, has done as of late, and all the stuff he did with like Link later and all that yeah. stuff. Like he's just, oh. he's just one of those cool indie guys, you know. I liked him in Explorers. No, <laughs> no, I mean that's I mean that's Joe Dante, man. Yeah, man, that was a great movie. When I was a kid. Yeah. I love that movie. Yeah, <laughs> I remember recording that off like HBO, man. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, he was, he was. I mean, he was a kid then. Yep. Yeah, so. like twelve. Because he's he's like roughly my age, I think, somewhere in that age. So that's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I forget how old. But yeah, he's 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 he's, he's like just fifty, maybe. My favorite. So, but he, he didn't like fade into obscurity or something. Like he he he's he, you know, he's a steady actor he's got steady work <laughs> oh yeah there's some of those guys that you're just like whatever happened to this guy and then you're like oh he's been acting the entire time what the hell <laughs> like what <laughs> he's been pounding out movies right. i've never seen him and i was like oh that's why he's just he's just a, a background guy now and you're just like okay or he's are they are they yeah. been or like you, they're on like uh, uh uh police procedural shows on like uh cbs or something like <laughs> right 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 like a side like sci-fi channel yeah, uh, uh, originals, <laughs> but th- those used to be <clears throat> like. I remember my dad used to watch Sci Fi Channel all the time. Those used to be pretty good stuff if you wanted to watch something bad. <laughs> well, um, this is going to go a little longer. I had a friend of mine who worked in comics, and um, they finally got to go to Sci Fi Channel and do a pitch meeting. And they're like, uh-huh. the hardest part you'll ever get is the pitch meeting. Because it's it's like yeah. super hard to get in there. They're like, but once I got in there, they're like, you know, we went in there with like 10 ideas. And they're like, okay, we like that one. We like that one. We like that. They're like, that. all right. That's what well, and they're like, we'll throw money at this and this. We'll, we'll see how far we can get with it. And then he goes, um, then they're like, what else do you have? And they're like, um, we ran out of stuff. So we started making stuff off the stuff <laughs> off our, our end. They're like, love it. Keep it. They're like, what else do you got? And he's like, um, it's a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> they just want material <laughs> they're just like, they were just going to town they were just like making stuff up they're like man i was just making stuff off the top of my head i don't i don't know <laughs> <laughs> well that's i mean that's that's cool though i mean it's it's uh you could definitely tell that it was kind of run like that <laughs> yeah at, at a one point <laughs> definitely like we'll take anything we can get just just give us ideas please <laughs> stuff we can make super cheap man super cheap yeah yeah <laughs> Baboons going crazy. Yes, uh, uh, baboons. Um, they, they got ex- they got laser eyes. Um, yeah. <laughs> they got Ron Perlman for three days. Yeah, yeah. He's he's the scientist that created them. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Boom. Um, there we go. There's the film. <laughs> it, it, it's it's and that's the almost the way they had it. They're like you know they would get these big name actors for a day, two days, record their yeah, scenes. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, or uh, somebody told me that they had uh, Eric Roberts and Eric Roberts <laughs> filmed like five movies in like five days. And yeah. he just went in, filmed on this one set, moved over here, filmed his scenes <laughs> over here, filmed the scene. He never met the rest of the cast. Yeah, he right. <laughs> filmed on like a, not even like a green screen, but like in, a, in like a, 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 a set that had yeah. nothing to do with the rest of the film, but they had him in the movie. So, right. They got him. They got Eric Roberts. I mean, that that's 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 priceless. Yes. If you, get, if you have Eric Roberts, it's it's a surefire hit. You got Julia Roberts' brother. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I mean, he's, he's, he's you know he's got a face. 
He was in Batman. Come on. Don't. Yeah, he was a Dark Knight. I mean, yeah. yeah so. All right. Well, I'm gonna let you go, sir, and uh, I'm gonna get to editing this up because I don't think I had to edit much on this one. But uh, get everything ready to go, and uh, hope to have it up soon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I I really appreciate it, man, and uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Um, Good talking to you. Yeah, love talking shop, and uh, I guess one more thing, uh, actor wise, if I had to pick another actor, Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin. <laughs> We, we always had the joke is that who'd win a fight, Lee Marvin or Lee Van Cleef? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> we like, what, is it the Old West or is it in a war movie? <laughs> it's well, Old West, Lee Van different. Cleef's got him. If it's a yeah, war movie, yeah. Lee Marvin's got him. Because, <laughs> yeah, Lee Van Lee always died in Westerns. Yeah. <laughs> But war movies, he was he was he was bad. I mean, he was he was a legit dude because he was at Pele Lou or whatever. He was he was a real deal. But uh, yeah, awesome guy. Um, but yeah, again, pleasure, man. Good I really man. appreciate it. <laughs> All right, man. Take care, sir. You have a good night. Hey, you too, man. Talk to you later. Yeah, see ya. See ya. Bye. All right, we want to thank Johnny for showing up on tonight's episode. Um, big shout out. He um, So if there's any aspiring actresses out there uh, who want to be in a movie, you need to get a hold of him, send him your, your headshot and your reel. Um, so maybe you can be in a movie. Um, so as always, you can check out Group Therapy every Monday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Sci Fridays every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Saturday morning serials at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Saturday. And as always, we are brought to you by Are You Game, the best comic book collectible magic video game toy store located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. And I'm going to say goodnight to all y'all, good day, whatever. But take care. Later. See you.